Hi, everyone. It's Bradford Shellhammer again. Um, I am uh, just fresh off the conversation I had with Andrea, where we talked about what eBay is doing to better our buyer experience and make um, your product shine way more thoughtfully in our ecosystem. But I uh, wanted to shift gears and start to talk about um, the bigger ecosystem of e-commerce and retail and specifically mobile commerce. And we are here joined by Julie Osk from uh, Forrester, the um, awesome analyst firm that knows everything about everything when it comes to e-commerce, mobile commerce. Um, and we've asked Julie to come and give us some advice and some tips and just some feedback on what she's seeing. She is an expert in the mobile space um, and she has a unique vantage point on uh, what quality looks like and what's going on, the bigger trends that are happening, what consumers are turning to, what are the new expectations of consumers. And frankly, we're excited to have her here. Um, eBay's doing awesome things right now, but just want to make to keep us in check to make sure that we're doing the right things too when we benchmark benchmark ourselves to industry standards and the competition. So, um, welcome, Julie. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I'm going to just get right get right to it. Uh, quick question: What insights do you have for this amazing seller community, specifically on the construct of mobile growth? Um, and what our sellers should know about the trends that are happening in the industry right now. Yeah, thanks, Bradford. So I think the first thing your sellers should know is that the opportunity is really big. They're, the smartphone is the dominant platform, the dominant device globally, whether people are reading the news, shopping, checking the bank balance in their account, whatever it may be, the smartphone is it. And there will be no device, not a watch, not a smart speaker, not anything that will displace the smartphone in the near future. Uh, there are probably, I don't know, there's more than 7 billion people on the planet. I'm going to tell you there's more than 4 to 5 billion smartphones, but more importantly, 82% of those who are shopping online are making purchases on a mobile device. In fact, even 16% of consumers make a purchase on a mobile phone, either on an app or in a browser, at least weekly. So the numbers are really big. Uh, we're even getting to the point where mobile commerce, so sales on a mobile device, are approximating almost half of all e-commerce sales today in the United States. It's 45%, and that's even bigger in some of the other countries. Um, some folks may ask, well, you know, what was the impact of the pandemic, right? Because that's very real, and it's still, like, we're still in the pandemic, so to speak. And, you know, the pandemic was really, really good to e-commerce. We saw e-commerce sales grow by 30% during the pandemic, and we saw that grow in a lot of categories. There were some obvious things like, well, it was media, it was entertainment, people were buying more computers and smartwatches and gaming and things to, to entertain themselves. But they also bought like home furniture. They invested in home improvement. They bought uh, personal devices. They invested in fitness. They bought sneakers. They bought clothing, surprisingly, given that we were all at home. And all of these categories saw not just double digit growth, but growth in the percentages of 20, 30, 40 percent plus on a year over year basis in the year 2020. Um, so a lot happened and there's a lot of opportunity when we look at online and even, you know, whether it's on a mobile device or it's a tablet or it's a computer, there's a lot of opportunity because consumers are there and consumers are buying. I think one of the things you may ask. I said, so one of the things you may ask then is, well, you know, well, what's slowing us down? You know, what's, uh, well, it sounds like life is easy. Let's just put some stuff on the website and let people find it and let people buy it. Right. And I think what's also happening is because there are more and more connected devices. It's just the landscape in which consumers are buying has become a lot more complex. On average, consumers are connecting on more than 13 devices, platforms, and different channels. So it could be through text, it could be SMS, I'm on a browser, I'm on an app, I'm on a progressive web app, I'm using voice, whatever it may be. And it's become a very, uh, I would say, complicated landscape um, in which folks are selling. And so that's, you know, some of the challenges, you know, that we're faced going forward. It's uh, almost as if we've been spoiled. Uh, there's a lot of goodness, there's a lot of online, but there's also some challenges that come with it. Great insights and thank you for the feedback and the, the comments. Um, you talked a lot about kind of the what SMS um, and, and some of the platforms and mobile. Um, and I, I would love to maybe shift and talk about um, how technology can start to improve some of these experiences and remove some of this friction. Um, recently, when you and I got together to chat, we talked about, you know, eBay's um, 
awesome opportunity, which is we have, you know, 1.7 billion products for sale listings at any given moment. And there's a real need for some kind of proactive engagement from eBay to say, hey, we can help sort through this stuff for you. Um, there's new, there's used, there's collectibles and there's non-collectibles products. And the, as you talked about, you know, we, we, we saw um, great growth in all categories, not just ones that you might have thought were specific to the pandemic. So knowing all that and knowing how big eBay is, um, what are you seeing as far as how others in the industry are anticipating customer needs? Uh, what's working? What's not working? What are some of the barriers? But how can we um, be better at proactive engagement with our customers? Yes, yeah, so Robert, that's a really good question. And I think the first thing to put out is eBay's doing well, right? We, you know, in terms of just Forrester numbers, we saw an absolute percentages, 3% more people shop on eBay in the year 2020 than the year before, which is more than a double digit growth year over year. So eBay is doing well. I think the thing that you're calling an attention to is eBay is doing so well that you have one point. 7 billion listings on your website, right? And that's what we call a bit of cognitive load, right? We have this expectation and we've had this expectation, right? For two decades, three decades, that if consumers want something, they're gonna be like, oh, you know, maybe eBay has that. I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna search and I'm gonna look. But the first thing I have to do as a consumer is like, well, what do I want? Where should I go? What should the search terms be? Like, how do I look for that, right? There's a lot of translation that goes into the consumer's head. And that's fundamentally just a lot of cognitive load. And so the first thing you have to think about when you think about a consumer and their expectations, because consumers want convenience, there's no doubt about it. I will do the easiest thing that I can do, right? <laughs> we see a lot of that manifest itself in the United States in a lot of ways, yep. but this evolution in consumer expectations of convenience is constantly evolving and it's constantly changing. And so when we think about, well, what does the consumer expect and how do you continue to evolve experiences to meet consumer expectations? There's a couple of big leaps forward that experiences will take. So the first one is, is consumers just want to talk in a natural language, whether I talk or I text or I type in a search term, I want that to be in a natural language. And then the second thing is, is when you start, you think about the next step forward, it's really beginning to anticipate the needs of consumers and even serve them more proactively. Because just because you build it, right? We've all heard this phrase, just because you build it, just because you have it, doesn't mean consumers are going to come. And so, you say, well, okay, that's complicated. You know, on one hand, you've told us it's a very complicated landscape to deploy in because there's all these devices and platforms and different channels. And now you've told me that there's too much cognitive load on consumers because they don't want to just come to the website and search and browse around. So what do we do about it? So I think one of the first things we think about is you have to know what the needs of your customers are. Are they in a task oriented mode, which means I just want to get in, get something done as fast as I can, make that purchase and get back out. Or am I in a mode of, oh, I just want to explore, I want to look around, I want to shop as if I were in the mall one day. And you really have to understand that there's two different modes that consumers come into when they come into a shopping site or a site to be entertained like eBay. And so then, Bradford, we really get to your point is when consumers get into this task oriented mode, how do we lift that cognitive load, right? And how do we do more for consumers? And so the answer is, you first may ask, well, do consumers want that, right? Julie asked from Forrester, she's saying that the consumers want it. And the answer is yes. Um, and businesses want that, right? Your competitors want that. When I go out, I've talked to dozens and dozens of executives and I say, hey, do you think it would create value for your business and value for your customers if you could anticipate the needs of your customers and then serve them proactively wherever they may be? A hundred percent of executives say yes, that is something that they want to do. And then you say, well, can they do it? And the answer is no, we can't really anticipate the needs, let alone act on it proactively, right? So this is a journey that we're gonna be on. But let me take a moment and just tell you what kind of a journey that is and how do you think about anticipating the needs of consumers and serving them proactively. So it's not just by chance that they get to their website, type in a search term that leads them to your product. And then what are some of the challenges in doing so? So what I would tell you is, and this is again, when people get into a task oriented mode, not an entertainment mode, is there's three core types of journeys that people get on. The first type is, it's just, there are things that are well understood. Like I'm a new mother, um, same thing as being a new parent, maybe I'm buying a new house, um, or you know, even some things like medical treatment can be relevant, right? But somebody's on a very well understood journey. I'm boarding a flight. It's a very well understood journey of what's step one, two, three, four. So right, one way, check the box, you can anticipate needs and serve customers proactively. And that's what a lot of mobile notifications are about today. 
The second use case we think about is when you're actually watching somebody in real time and you're like, okay, I can see this person. You might be, you know, the physical world example would be I'm standing at a corner. I see an elderly person. They're having trouble crossing the street. I anticipate they may need help. And I do that. Uh, one time I was jogging in Atlanta. I fell bleeding in like 15 places and I needed to give a speech, you know, two hours from then I walked into a local or a national drugstore chain to buy first aid. You know, long story there about how they didn't really ask me what I needed, but you can see what I need in that moment because I'm literally telling you or showing you what I need. Yep. And then the third and the most powerful example is when you actually can see something, develop an insight and anticipate somebody might need. So in the physical world, you might see a child eating melting ice cream. You're like, oh yeah, that's probably going to drip. And then the question you have to ask yourself is, is those are physical world examples, but how do we put technology in place that lets those examples play out in a digital environment. And that's what's really hard to do today, Bradford. And that's what most companies want to do, but they can't do it because they don't have holistic customer profiles. They can't uh, serve up relevant experiences. They don't have the ability to watch. They don't have the ability to develop insights, but that's the future as we know it. When we look more like seven to 10 years out is either having well understood journeys, watching people and understanding what their needs are or developing insights so that you can serve them proactively. But this is all in the context of anticipating needs and proactively serving customers because coming to a website eight or 10 years from now with 1.7 billion listings and trying to find what I want, that may not be what I decide to do if I'm in more of a task oriented mode and just not entertaining myself. Yeah. Great. Great. And it's, uh, it makes me feel good about a lot of the, the investment we're making in personalization and customer segmentation and understanding, you know, is this customer in and out looking for something and the need that we're anticipating is convenience or are they kind of a, one of the traditional eBay customers like a, a sneakerhead or a trading card enthusiast where the um, serendipitous moments of browsing and discovery are way more, more attuned to that. So thanks for justifying a lot of the investments we're making. With that yeah, said, it's really important to know that because like I said, going forward, personalized, relevant, right sized are all going to be part of that package. That's also proactive. Yeah, yeah. fair and great. Thank you for this. Uh, one, one, one last big question I have for you then is that like everything's happening so fast, you know, the, the COVID just made it all even faster. Um, the adoption of new technologies, the shift to mobile, um, all these new future experiences to start thinking about and considering um, maybe some more practical advice for the sellers on this call as they start to prepare um, for the shifting landscape and all the new things that are going to be thrown at them as business owners and business decision makers. Uh, wh what are some advice that you have to make their inventory, you know, uh, shine when it's there for the right customer at the right time in the right channel? Yeah, let me, let me run through a few things that I know about how experiences are evolving and how consumer expectations of digital experiences are evolving and then what it means for the seller. So the first thing that we think about with emerging technologies, and this I'll tie this back into some of the things that I've already said, is that consumers expect experiences to get faster and have uh, less latency, right? So even when I talk about that interim step of where we are today, I come to eBay, I search around, and the next step forward in the next three to five years is going to be more about natural language. If you think about the conversations that you may have with somebody or if you were in a retail environment, I might say, hey, I need something that looks a little like this or I want something for this occasion. And you have to start thinking about, OK, that's what happens in the physical world. But how did I put that into the digital world? So one of the first things that will be really important for sellers is the taking into account that images and voice recognition is going to happen really fast on devices and it's really going to accelerate people's browsing and improve like the searchability of products. So when you're thinking about the products that you're selling, it's not just about a, a text-based description, but it's also about the image, image recognition so that somebody can use their words or use words like, I want to buy something like this or something for this occasion or what this actress was wearing on TV and consider how you would help somebody as if they were in a physical environment, but it's a digital world where you, you, know, you have the access to the resources that eBay is giving you, like image recognition and voice recognition and so forth. I think the second thing you have to keep in mind is as experiences go forward, they're going to more closely mimic or represent human behavior. 
And so when we think about that, right, the voice and text that we'll have and that will come back at consumers has to display empathy and understand what it is that consumers want and also be able to persuade consumers. So we're not just returning facts. We're not just returning, hey, here's like a listing of 10 red dresses or hey, 10 leather jackets that are red, but also what would look good on you? What are other wearing? You know, what's hot right now? But think about some of the emotional ways that digital needs to engage with the consumer to drive them to make that purchase. The third thing on the list is that experiences will allow, uh, be, you know, be able to be more immersive and more what I call invisible in some ways too. So consumers are going to tap and they're already starting to do this into immersive experiences while shopping. And the, the biggest takeaway for you is that conversions will increase, but there's going to be some other factors involved as well. When we look at something, so let's take something like augmented reality, somewhere between 20 and 30% of consumers have at least used that technology in the past year. And we've seen really big retailers put that into play. And what happens is, and this, and this is bigger than augmented reality, but that's one of the things, right? Where I can put some kind of a digital overlay, like see how a digital shoe fits on my foot or how sunglasses look on my face or a ring looks on my finger. And when we give consumers the ability to more accurately see what something is like, whether it's a 3D view or it's a video or it's some kind of augmented reality, like again, uh, what does the shoe look like on my foot or the, the art on the wall behind me or a chair in the living room, the conversion rates go up by over 20%. Uh, consumers browse more, they return less, right? There's a lot more positive impact that comes to retailers when they give consumers somewhat of a better way to experience a product. The fourth thing, and this is really important and goes back to what Bradford is saying, but emerging technologies are going to allow uh, personalized experiences with context and uh, insights, right? We're going to see search results, content, and messaging uh, all incorporate preferences, past behavior, and more. So the, converse, uh, the conversions and the convenience are both going to improve. So when we think about personalization, you know, it's not just about like, you know, if you look at a lot of personalization days, like, well, what has Julie been looking at or what has she been searching online for the past three months, right? And then I get an unending number of ads showing me the exact same thing that I probably bought on yesterday. So what do we mean by personalization? Well, don't tell me you're selling something to me unless you have that something for me and it's in my size. Or maybe you're going to know what my body shape is like if we're talking about clothing. So, you know, so you're going to show me things that look good on me, not just things that are available. This is going to apply to my home. It's going to apply to my car. It's going to apply to my health and wellness. So not just available, but what also matches my interest and more importantly, matches my need in that moment. And then finally, the big thing we'll see with the impact of emerging technologies on digital experiences is brands are going to do more. So proactively offer blended um, experiences from brands that are part of your overall ecosystem. And so what that means is, is you may be getting data or somebody may be shopping on retailer A and retailer B, and then they're going to come to you to get the third thing or the fourth thing and the fifth thing that they need. But how do you think about serving consumers within their entire ecosystem and not just from the point of view of you and what you know as a consumer? So smart sellers will anticipate the needs of their best customers and serve them proactively, you know, throughout the entire life cycle. So things like conversion, sales, and loyalty are only going to increase because we're going to have this cycle that feeds on itself. So if I trust you, and if I trust you and eBay, I'm more likely to shop there. I'm more likely to share data. I'm more likely to share information about my interests, what I'm doing, what my next life stage is. I'm planning to buy a house, send a kid to school, whatever it may be. And the more data that you have, the more holistic that profile is, the more likely you are going to be able to anticipate my need and deliver something that's highly relevant to me in that moment. So a lot of opportunities for sellers here. But what we really need to think about and be in the mindset of, this isn't about doing old things in new ways. This is thinking about the use of technology and what are the net new things that I can do. And some of the best examples for that you're going to find is thinking about like how people sell in the real world and how we put more of that into a digital experience in the environment that you're selling in today. Excellent. This was a lot of awesome information. I just want to say thank you, Julie, for joining us. And for all of this, I'm sure it's given me a lot of fodder to think on and, and think about, and I'm sure it has for our sellers here on the call. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And I do encourage everyone to take a snapshot. We've, we've, we've combined the key takeaways from Julie's talk today. And um, I would take a, a, a screen grab, take a photograph of this, because um, this information you're going to want as you plot uh, your, your business's next course. Great. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. Thank you.